Hello everyone, my name is Fafa Gilbert and welcome to my Creative African Cooking channel in Dudu by Fafa. Now I don't know if I should cook today or just, you know, talk to you guys. Um, let's think. Food talk. I can do both, can't I? Yeah, so now let's see what about. Today I'm going to show you how to infuse Precasa into your goat meat stew. Yes, Precasa is used widely in West Africa, particularly in palm nut soup, banger soup, as Nigerians do refer to it as. And yes, it's also made into a drink. It has a lot of nutritional value and it's sweet and just has the strangest sort of flavor to in a dish and depth of flavor to in a dish. So I'm infusing that flavor into my go to meat stew. Yes. Now this recipe was filmed whilst I was in Ghana. It's one of those lost files that I managed to find. So of course, when I was in Ghana, I got the go to meat with the skin on, which is like the ultimate thing. <laughs> like if you don't like it with the skin on, you can always take that off not a problem and I have got my holy grail which is my aniseed my ginger my onion and garlic that I've mixed together and of course blended it to this beautiful consistency and I'm going to steam my goat meat so I'm adding that now with goat meat it does have this pungent smell so the best way around it which is what I find is I like to add chilies and um, the fragrant green chilies from Ghana to it when I'm steaming it what it does it adds this aromatic flavor to the meat as well and also so sort of takes that sort of um, you know pungent goat smell out of your cooking but it makes it more fragrant you know it invites people to your kitchen exactly so of course I'm gonna mix everything together and cook this slowly for about 45 minutes you can add a little bit of water if you wish but I tend to cook on a very low heat avoid adding water to intensify the flavor so once you go to meat is done then I'm going to fry it now this is gonna be like a one-pot stew so I'm going to fry this for about 7 to 10 minutes because I need it browned. Then again, I'm going to be adding some tomatoes to it. And the acidity of that tomato is going to break the fibers of the goat meat and soften it as well. So you see, this whole stage and this whole process is all about the flavors and infusing. I can't wait to add the Precaset to it, the main ingredients. So yes, Precaset is a West African spice and is a definitely a must try. You should incorporate it into your stew because we do usually use it usually in soups and, you know, making drinks. This point, I decided to add some cumin seeds that I had at home. Now, of course, this is optional because if you don't have access to it, you can omit it entirely. But of course, this is how I made it, so I'm telling you. So if you do have access to cumin seeds, then yes, by all means, just add that for that extra flavor, as I always say. The difference in making this particular stew is I keep building upon the flavors. Now, of course, I had used the whole ginger aniseed mixture in steaming the goat meat. And of course, by the time I've steamed it and I'm frying it, it does lose a bit of that flavor. So to ensure that flavor is still enhanced through the dish, I've just added a little bit just to revive that flavor again and to allow this to fry and infuse into the meat again. Now I'm adding my tomato puree or tomato paste, may I say. I think I think I used the um, Rika um, because it's a brand that I've known and it's something that my, my mom buys all the time. So that's what I've used um, since, I guess. And yeah, I'm just going to mix everything together till it's well combined, yet again on a medium heat to fry this just beautifully. And as you can see, it's just working perfectly. Now I've been frying this for about four to five minutes. And now I think this stew is ready for my main ingredient, you see. As I always say, I like to infuse the flavors. Are you excited yet? What would you be having your goat meat stew with right now? Like some hot king, kibbe kraut, or hey, yes, there is a stone, speck of that's it it's added so i'm going to be frying this and you know at this point the breakfast is going to do its own thing it's going to infuse its flavor and all that bits into the stew it adds the sweetness and of course like the onion as well adds the sweetness to it and the tomatoes the acidity on in the tomatoes balances that flavor as well so i'm just going to cook this gently for about 10 minutes yet again on that medium heat because all i'm trying to do 
has intensified the flavor there's no point in adding all these spices and herbs and flavors to your dish if you don't cook at the right temperature to allow the infusion to take place just beautifully so i'm using the locally um, acquired um, rosemary the dried rosemary i got from the market yes because you know lamb and rosemary goes of course goat meat and rosemary definitely they're match made in heaven so it gives it that fragrant taste as well and it's one of those secret ingredients people go like what is that i know right so i'm adding my salt to taste now you know with a Ghanaian salt one has to be very careful because you know you don't need a lot um because a little goes a long way so yes adding my salt to taste and i think now i'm going to be adding my tomatoes so what i've done is i've blended my fresh tomatoes and i've cooked it down so i've made almost like a passata um in that sense um just this whole process of like you know cooking your tomatoes beforehand cuts your cooking time in half because as you can tell like each step i'm just cooking this gently and allowing the infusion to take place now if i did not boil that tomato till i have that beautiful paste like you know texture that i added to it then it meant that my cooking time would extend now at this point with the tomatoes what's going to happen is as i mentioned earlier the fibers of the goat meat are just going to break they're going to infuse all these flavors you see as i always say this is not any other food this is in didu by fafa you see your christmas meal should not be the same now not with all this infusion taking place yes exactly so yeah I think that this is just frying perfectly and after about 30 minutes of cooking I can see that yeah my stew is infused and uh, warm. yes what is this okay so I blended some onions and just a little bit of ginger just to intensify that sweet flavor again so this is almost coming to the end of the dish but the interesting thing was even though I added this, I fried it for another 20 minutes to allow that infusion, obviously, to take place. And I left the stew to rest and I left it for 24 hours to allow that infusion to settle and that flavor to intensify. During the Christmas festivities, it is so easy to be overwhelmed when it comes to cooking. Now, these are types of recipes you can make beforehand. You can freeze it so you free some time for yourself. What that actually means is, as of when you want to use it, to either use with your jollof, have it with your kinky, whatever it is that you decide to, you know, accompany this dish with, it's easier. You're cutting your cooking time in half. Best to portion everything and freeze and date them. So yet again, when you need it, you take it out. And at this point, um, I think I left it, the stew for about 24 hours and the infusion had taken place. All the spices and everything had just infused perfectly. And now, before I served, you know, I just like to add my own crunch of like freshly sliced onions. And I just sort of fry gently and I have some bakushito or green chilies, the fragrant green chilies from Ghana. They are incredible, absolutely. So yet again, as I say, as and when you're about to dish this out, you just do this with shenanigans. You know what, you can also try, you know, just adding some of the Guinean basil um, as well to it, which is the kokomesa, um, yeah. Yes, and you'd end up with this beauty. Now, look at this. Look at this infusion. And I remember I made this into this beautiful bulk of wheat, um, sort of jollof with the goat meat. It was just incredible. And I also added some waga shibikra to it. I think that celebrating Miss Ghanaian ingredients is something I do enjoy because the flavors are so unique and wonderful. Now, if you haven't clicked that subscribe button, I don't know what you're waiting for, particularly the notification button as well. What that means is each time I do upload a video, it's delivered straight to email address no wahala. Okay. I'll be leaving the list of ingredients and measurements on my blog in didubyfafa.blogspot.com. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, as in Didu by Fafa. Now, this is actually one of the dishes I made for mom as well before I left, and that was just beautiful. I know a lot of people have been asking about more series for like the spices and stuff, but yes, that's coming up. 
I am compiling a lot behind the scenes. I've got you back, guys. And you know what? As of the time that I was filming this, or actually doing the voiceover, it is like, you know, you guys have pushed us to 40,000 subscribers and over. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for your support, your loves, your likes. Charlie, you guys, I couldn't have done this without you. But until next time, take care of you. Be you, be nice, be beautiful. And guess what? I love you.